Hey everybody, I'm Travis. Welcome to Yoga Basics, a 60 minute level one class. We're gonna start off in child's pose. So let's go ahead and get started. So the big toes together, the knees open outward, the forehead rests down onto the mat. Uh, if you're practicing at home, and uh, your forehead doesn't naturally touch the floor, you can always grab a block and just put the block right underneath your forehead. That way your head has something to rest on. And in this yoga basis class that we're here to do and practice today, we'll take our time just moving through uh, these poses. And we'll take our time also to really focus on alignment good structural support, and also the importance of the breath. The breath is really the key to what we do. So take these moments right now and just see if you can start to find that wave of breath, just starting to move in and out through your nose. And then start to invite the inhales down a little bit deeper as you attract the oxygen down towards the bottoms of the lungs, and then complement those deep inhales with some longer exhales. And if you can really see the exhale all the way through to the end, your next inhale will become a little bit deeper. So you actually start to create a momentum within your breathing, within your breath. The inhales start to get deeper, the exhales start to get longer. And for the duration of this practice, you just enjoy. And you don't have any emails to write, any phone calls to make, any errands to run. This is really time devoted to you, devoted to you to give back to yourself so that ultimately you have more to give to others. So let the mind just continue to settle as you continue to dial that focus in to just that rhythm of the breath. Breathe in a good three to four seconds. Breathe in out a good three to four seconds as well. And allowing that breath to be balanced and to be even. And one last thing, see if you can start to bring in what we call the ujjayi breath. So you're pulling the breath along the base, the back of the throat until you create friction, a good quality friction that produces a sound. And that sound is like the sound of a whisper or the sound of wind. And this ujjayi sound is meant to be soothing and calming for our nervous system. And it's also an anchor because anytime you notice the mind wandering, you just bring your mind back to that sound of that ujjayi breath. Ujjayi also means victorious, as if that breath is there to help you gain victory over that busy, scattered, restless mind as you allow that mind to continue to come into a state of peace and stillness. And this is really the foundation for all of yoga. And as we prepare to move our bodies, you want to try and maintain what you just found, regardless of what yoga pose you're in. Good, you got it. So just keeping that breath and that flow from here. Go ahead and slide all the way up to tabletop pose, all fours position. So your hands are right underneath your shoulders. Spread your fingers out and get your indexes pointed straight forward. Press strong through your inner hands. Make sure your knees are right underneath your hips and the tops of the feet press down into the mat. Good. From here, cat and cow. Inhale, pull the heart forward, drop your belly down, and then exhale, slowly round in through every vertebra of your spine. Inhale, heart draws forward, collarbone spread, and then exhale, round in, chest, chin, and head. Good. Try that on your own several more cycles. We all have our own rhythm, our own pace, our own tempo. See if you can... Really start to feel yourself finding the yoga, though, as you blend together 
the rhythm of breath, body motion, and mind all into a state of union, of oneness. So instead of being divided, everything becomes united. And through that unity, we derive real power and real strength. Last round of these. Great, you guys. Now, let's come back to a neutral spine. Neutral tabletop pose. Step your feet to the back of the mat to plank pose. So up or push-up position. If you're practicing at home, you can always drop your knees onto the mat and you can modify it that way. Otherwise, keep the knees lifted up. Shoulders right above the wrist. The legs pressing back. Core is engaged, so your navel draws in towards the front of the spine. The face is soft. The tailbone lengthens back by the heels of the feet as your two hip points just kind of scoop underneath and forward. Take one last inhale plank, and then exhale lower slowly all the way down onto your belly. Good. Release the tops of the feet, extending back to the toes, and then let's come into a sphinx pose. So slide your elbows forward, right underneath your shoulders. And then imagine that your forearms are like railroad tracks or skis. So those are parallel to each other. You want to take the skin of your forearms, you want to pull that back as you pull your chest and your heart forward through your shoulders. So you're thinking about lengthening that spine. As you lengthen that spine forward, start lifting the chest up, but keep the neck long so the top of the neck actually lengthens up and your chin slightly comes down. And then just feel a nice, almost effortless stretch across your whole back and spine. Tops of the feet still pressing onto the floor. Stay one last inhale. And then exhale lower slowly all the way down, sliding the hands back by the ribs. So the base of your hand is all the way at the base of your ribs as we set up for cobra. Keep the hands where they are. And then baby cobra, inhale, just easily lift the chest up, not too high. And then exhale, lower all the way down. Beautiful. Four more of those. Inhale, rise up, cobra. And exhale, lower down. Three more. Inhale, chest up, shoulders roll back. And exhale, chest and chin to the mat. Good. Two more. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. One more time. Inhale, come up. This time you're going to hold at the top. Hold at the top. And really take your inner elbows. Draw those in towards your ribs. Just like the Sphinx pose, pull your heart forward through your shoulders. So you're lengthening that out. Good. Spread the collarbones wide. Take one last big inhale, Cobra. And then down dog. Tuck the toes. Lift the hips. Drop the head. And notice that breath still in that flow. Good. So downward facing dog. This is one of the hub poses. It's like our home base. So we weave in and out this pose many, many times. So let's just focus on the alignment. The hands spread out a tad wider than the shoulders. The index finger straight forward. Inner hands press strong. Good. The outer shoulders are rolling back, so you create space between the sides of the neck and the inner arms. As the outer shoulders roll back, the forearms pull in towards the midline. Your belly's engaged, navel drawing up towards the front of the spine. The tailbone sticking straight up like the apex of a triangle. And as the hips slope up, drive your heels down. If you're practicing at home, and you need to modify this pose, you can always put a little bend in your knees. That'll soften your hamstrings. You can also spread the feet out wider. You can walk the feet forward a couple of inches and make that down dog accessible. It'll take a little bit of time to get the backs of the legs opened up, but once you do, then you can come back to more of a, a traditional downward facing dog. Good, you guys. Wherever you are, 
Take one last inhale, gently press the hips back, and then exhale, lightly walk both feet all the way forward to the top of your mat. Spread your feet out about the width of the hips, and then grab elbows with your hands. So you create a box. Put that box around your head, relax the head, relax the torso, relax your face, and if it feels good, you can always sway side to side or lightly bounce up and down to the knees. Just whatever feels right. So work out those kinks, untie those knots, and just start to loosen the body up. Beautiful. Bring the hands back down onto the mat. Bring the hands up to your shins and to a first halfway up flat back. Good. So imagine that your spine's like a bungee cord, and you're stretching that cord out, seeing how much traction, how much elasticity you can get as you draw your heart forward away from your hips. Your neck stays long, so chin slightly in, and the top of the neck lengthens forward. Wherever you are, take one last big inhale, stretch that spine out, and then exhale, forward fold. Melt all the way down. Good. Put a little bend in your knees. Go ahead and bring your hands all the way up to your waist. And then grounding through the feet, leading through the heart. On a big inhale, rise and float both arms all the way up to the sky. And then both hands to prayer right in front of your chest. Good. Take a moment. Close the eyes. And Tadasana is another key pose. So with your eyes closed, see if you can feel all four corners of the feet evenly rooting down into the mat. See if you can feel your thighs drawing up, your tailbone softening down, your bottom front ribs softening in, the back of the heart elevating up. Shoulders relaxing back and down, so your neck feels long, your trap muscles are relaxed. The top of the neck lengthening up, and the chin ever so slightly dipping down. All the facial muscles soft, top of the head opening up to the sky. As you continue to focus your mind on the breath and on the sensation that comes up, as you move in and out of all these different poses. Good, from here, slowly open up the eyes, release the arms down by your sides, and then coming into Tadasana. Palms face forward, fingers spread, feel that energy of stability, of steadiness, of connectedness, and how good it feels to be steady. Good it feels to be centered. Now take both arms, reach them all the way up to the sky. Inhale as we flow through half sun salutations. Forward fold. On the exhale, dive down. On the out breath. Flat back. Inhale, pull the spine out. And then exhale, forward fold, melt down. Inhale, rise and float. Both arms all the way up. And then both hands back to prayer. Good. A few more rounds of those. Inhale. Circle those arms up. Little arch back at the top might even feel nice. And then exhale. Forward fold. Dive down like a moving prayer. Flat back. Inhale. Spine pulls out. And then exhale. Forward fold. Inhale. Rise and soar. Both arms all the way up above. And then exhale, both hands to prayer. As you consolidate that energy back in. Inhale, arms reach up. Feel those feet anchor down. And exhale, forward fold. Letting the breath lead and guide the way. Flat back. Inhale, get long. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise and fly, arms up high above. 
And exhale both hands to prayer. Anjali, the gesture of offering. Inhale, offer those arms all the way up to the sky. And then exhale, forward fold. You're just sailing with breath. Good. Flat back. Inhale. This time, step back to plank. Upper push-up. Pause there. Come back to plank. Take a moment. Get your alignment dialed in. Make sure your shoulders are right above your wrists so your weight slightly forward. Good sides of the waist. Lifting up. Tailbone lengthening back by those heels. Take one last inhale. Plank pose. And then exhale, lower slowly, all the way down onto your belly. As you lower down, keep your elbows in. Good, cobra. Inhale, lift the chest up, toes stretching to the back. And then down dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips, drop the head, and just come back to that breath. Good, while you're hanging out there, breathing deep, feel free to alternate one heel to the floor at a time. Just pedaling out through your feet, stretching the backs of the legs, and just continuing to just work through your body. You dissolve tensions away, as you dissolve stresses away, and you just restore yourself back to a place of balance, a place of health, a place of well-being. Good. Coming back to that neutral downward facing dog, feel those heels pressing down to the ground. We're going to come now into what we call full sun salutations. Surya Namaskar A, sun prayers. So here we go. Take an inhale, stretch back, down dog. And then exhale, walk, both feet all the way through. Flat back, inhale, spine out. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise and float, both arms all the way up. And then both hands to prayer as you find center again. Inhale, arms reach up, grow long, get tall. And exhale, forward fold, all the way down. Flat back, inhale, spine out. Step back to plank, pause there. Take one inhale, plank. And then lower slow, exhale with control. Cobra, inhale, chest up, collarbone spread. And then down dog, lift those hips. Come back to your ujjayi breath. Good, nowhere to get to, nowhere to go. I'm not worrying about the past, not worrying about the future. I'm just existing right here in the now, in the present moment. So much stress, so much anxiety, so much angst comes from a lack of being present. Just stay dialed into the present as you continue to anchor in with that rhythm of the breath. Good, take a big inhale, stretch back, strong arms, and then exhale, walk, or lightly jump, both feet through. Good, flat back, inhale, heart out, and then exhale, hinging down low. Inhale, rise and sweep, both arms up, and then both hands to prayer, Anjali. Inhale, arms reach up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Blending breath, body and mind. Flat back. Inhale, heart draws out. Step back to plank on the exhale. Pause there. Take one inhale to set. And then exhale, lower down. As you lower down, heart forward. Good, cobra. Inhale, not too high, not too low. And then down dog. Come all the way back. Good, let's do this. Let's come up onto the tips of the toes so your heels raise up and then let your heels swivel over to the right. So heels over to the right. You're still pulling your hips up and what we're looking for is a nice stretch into the left ribs. See if you can breathe into those left ribs, breathe into that left lung and feel those muscles starting to open up. Good. Come back to neutral on the inhale. And then same thing on the other side. He'll swivel to the left as you breathe into your right lung and those right ribs. Just continue to create space in the body. And then you breathe into those spaces. You allow the breath. You allow the blood. 
You allow that to irrigate into those places, literally washing away the old and flushing in the new. Come back up to neutral on the toes. Continue to draw your belly up and in. Good. Keep your hips high as can be, and then drive your heels back down to the mat. Good. Fingers nice and wide. We'll flow through one more round of our sun salutations. Take a big inhale, sink in, and then exhale, walk, or float both feet through. Flat back, inhale, hard out. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise and float both arms up. And then both hands to prayer, back to center. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Flat back, inhale. Step back to plank, pause there. Take one inhale. And then exhale, lower all the way down. Cobra inhale, caress that spine, and then exhale back, downward face and dog. Good, you guys. Let's lift the right leg off the ground now, parallel to the floor, and then see if you can get your right leg long and straight. Good, right leg's parallel. Your right foot is flexed, so right toes face straight down, and you're pressing out through your right heel, almost as if you're standing on your right foot, right leg. Also notice that your hips are even with each other, so you're turning your outer right hip down, you're lifting your inner right thigh up. Good, take one last inhale there, and then set the right foot back onto the mat, down dog. Good, switch sides, left leg lifts up, keep rolling the outer shoulders back, and then feel your outer left hip turning down, inner left thigh lifting up. Good, breath still in that flow. Inner hands nice and strong. Take one last inhale there. And then down dog, left foot releases. Take an inhale, stretch back, down dog. And then exhale, bring the feet all the way forward, top of the mat. Flat back, inhale, heart stretches out. And then forward fold, exhale. With your feet together, bend the knees, squat the hips down. And then chair pose, both arms all the way up to the sky. So the weight's back into the heels of the feet. Good. Take a moment. Look down at your, your feet. See if you can see your toes. If not, pull your hips, pull your knees back some more, and then lift all 10 toes off the mat. Lift the toes up. Good. Spread the toes out. Feel that spreading action. Now release the toes back onto the mat. But continue to keep the weight back into the heels of the feet. Continue to squat down through those glutes. Now the elbows draw towards straight. Outer arms roll forward. Pinkies turn in. And then you soften your neck muscles down. Find your gaze around the horizon. Slightly above, slightly below is fine as well. Notice your face is soft. Now squat down a little bit deeper. One more inhale, lift those arms up. And then exhale, forward fold, melt down low. Good, flat back. Inhale, spine out. Exhale, step back to plank, pause there. One inhale to set. And then exhale, lower down with pure muscle. Cobra, inhale. Down dog on the exhale. Good, lift the right leg to the sky, inhale. And then flow your right foot all the way forward to the top of your mat. Good. If you're practicing with us at home and your right foot doesn't make it all the way to the top of the mat, just grab that foot, slide it all the way forward. Get it all the way up there. Good. Now, if your feet were next to each other, you'd want them to be spread about the width of the hips. So make sure that you're not too much on a tightrope. Now, bring your chest on top of your right thigh. Take both arms, reach them straight down by your sides. So arms reach into that back wall. Feel that strength through your lower body. And then crescent pose. Inhale. Both arms all the way up. Good. Everybody put a little bend in your back left knee. And as you bend that back left knee slightly, see if you can allow your tailbone to really soften down. So instead of that butt sticking out, you feel that pelvis 
Again, scooping underneath and forward. Good. Bring your awareness to your low belly, beneath your navel. Imagine that there's a zipper there, and you're zippering up. So it's like you're lifting your whole torso out of your hips, out of your pelvis. That way you're not collapsing into the joints. And then the arms, similar to chair, elbows drawing towards straight, outer shoulders rolling forward. And then also activate your hands by spreading your fingers open. Now take one last inhale, reach up, and then both hands to the mat on the exhale. Step the right foot back to plank, inhale, and then lower down slow on the exhale. Cobra, inhale, chest up, and then down dog, exhale. Very nice. Good, left leg lifts up, inhale. Left foot top of the mat, get that left foot all the way up there. Good. Make sure your left knee is right above your front left heel. And then chest on top of your left eye. Both arms straight down by your sides. So the foundation of anything is important. Doesn't matter if that's the foundation of a relationship, a business, or when you're building these poses. So really feel that rapport into the floor. Good crescent pose. Inhale both arms. All the way up. Beautiful, you guys. Little bend in that back right knee. As the body gets more warm, then you can start to straighten that back leg. But always initially, it's good to have a little bend in that knee, especially when we're focusing on the alignment. Feel your bones. Feel those bones in precise alignment. Feel spaciousness through all your joints. And then feel that energy. In yoga, we call it prana. Martial arts, they call it chi. Feel that prana moving through the whole landscape of your body. One more inhale. Reach up. Find your peak. Both hands to the mat on the exhale. Step the left foot back to plank inhale. And then lower slow with control exhale. Cobra. Inhale, heart slides up. And then down dog on the exhale. Good. Walk your hands to the back of your yoga mat. And then reach down. Grab your big toes, first two fingers. And then flat back. Inhale, stretch the heart up and out. And then forward fold, exhale. Bending the elbows. And pulling easily. Top of the head to the floor. Might be a place to close the eyes again. Bring that awareness back in. You know, so much of our day, we're looking outside of ourselves. We're being bombarded by all this external stimulation. Could use your yoga practice as an opportunity to take time to come back within. And by looking within, coming back within, allowing yourself to deepen your relationship to your own body, your own self. As you become more aware what are those feelings? What are those thoughts? What are those sensations that are coming up? Now release the big toes. Bring the hands behind the lower back. Interlace the fingers. And then draw your arms towards straight. Let the weight of your head go. It's a good 15, 16, 17 pounds for the average human being. That's a lot of weight. Let that weight go. Let the tensions in the upper back, the neck, the shoulders... Let that continue to just melt away as you become less heavy, less dense, and you start to become more light, more supple, more expanded. Take one last inhale, deep and in, and then both hands back to the mat on the out breath. Walk the hands forward to the top of the mat until you land back in our downward facing dog. As you come into down dog from a new angle, a new perspective, try and find that even distribution of weight between both your low body and your upper body, between your feet and between your hands. So you're not too far forward, not too far back, but you're looking for that middle path. Now right leg back up to the sky and now float it up, right foot top of the mat. Spin your back left foot flat on the mat. Make sure that your front right foot's a little to the right so that your front right heel lines up 
with the outside of your back left heel. Good, warrior one. Both arms all the way up to the sky. Good, feel your outer left foot really sealing into the floor as you lift up through that inner left arch. So you feel all the muscles along the back of that left leg really engaged and active. The right knee's bent right above that front right heel. Good, let's bring the right hand down to the right hip. Take that left arm and extend it forward. As that left arm's reaching forward, we want this outer left hip to turn forward as well. As the outer left hip turns forward, your inner left eye draws backward so that both hips are facing forward. The outer foot still sealed firm into the mat. Good, now the hips have clicked into place. Let's bring the arms back up overhead. So arms reach all the way up. Let's keep the hands about shoulder width apart and then see if you can roll those outer shoulders forward. Good, soften that neck down and then see if you can soften those bottom front ribs in. Feel the back of the heart lifting up. We're going to take one more inhale, warrior one, find your full expression, and then bring your hands to prayer right in front of your heart. Turn your torso out to the left, and then warrior two, let the arms flow down and out, as if you're just moving through liquid, moving through water. Now front right foot slides a little to the left, so that your front right heel lines up with that back left inner arch. You're bending your right knee right above your front right heel. The right knee shooting right towards the middle of that right foot, which is pretty much your second or third toe. The right hip wraps underneath and in. The back outer left eye presses forward so that you level out through the pelvis. Arms right in alignment with each other, gazing out across that front right middle finger. Where the eyes are looking at are always a key component to any pose. In yoga, we call that the drishti. Drish means to see. See your point. Lock in. Good. Flip the right palm up to the sky. And then reverse warrior. Left hand out or left leg. Good. The lower body pretty much stays the same. Still bending that right knee. Still tracking it towards the middle of that right foot. The right elbow draws towards straight. The right bicep pulls back around that right ear. Good, if you feel inspired, take one last inhale deep in that stretch. And then back to warrior two. Beautiful, you guys. Now, right forearm on top of the right thigh, left arm straight up to the sky. So we call this the modified, modified side angle. One thing to look out for is that you're not collapsing into that right shoulder. So your right forearm presses strong into the mat. That way you don't dump into this shoulder. So press the right forearm down, you root down, and then you feel that rebounding, rising action as that left arm reaches all the way up. Good, the outer left foot glues into the floor. Now turn your left chest open, and then reach your left arm all the way forward and out. So extended side angle. And then try rotating that left arm up a little bit, left pinky down a little, so you get as much freedom in your left shoulder joint as possible. And you find that beautiful diagonal line of energy from your outer left foot all the way through your left hand. Now give that one last little reach. Inhale, rise up, warrior two. And then straighten your front right knee, right leg. Good. Right leg straightens. You're going to slide your back foot in about three, four inches or so. So your feet are about three and a half feet apart. You want your feet lined up heel to heel. So you may need to bring your right foot a little bit to the right. Back left toes angle slightly forward. And then from here, you're going to reach out through that front right arm on the inhale. And then triangle. Right hand comes down on top of your right leg, your foot, or like Anna, you can use a block. Let's put the block on the outside of the foot here. A lot of times when we bring the hand on the inside of the foot, then the spine kind of collapses in a little bit. 
And one thing that we want in this pose is we want the spine to be right above that right leg. So her right ribs floating down, left arms reaching up to the sky. And then you can really feel in this pose, there's loads of space. So you breathe into those spaces. Breathe across the chest, breathe into the hips, breathe into the inner thighs, breathe to wherever you feel it. Good, now roll that left chest open, extend that left arm all the way forward. Extended triangle. Feel your right hip wrapping underneath and in. Feel that left arm reaching out long as you get long across that whole left side body. Give that one last little reach. And then inhale, rise all the way back up. Good. Rebend your front right knee. Back to warrior two. Feel free to spread the feet back out a little bit wider. Take a moment, get grounded, feel connected into the floor below you, flip the right palm up to the sky, and then reverse warrior, inhale up and back, cartwheel the hands to the ground on the exhale, step the right foot back to plank inhale, lower slow exhale, cobra inhale, and then down dog on the exhale. Awesome, you guys. Take an inhale, stretch it back. And then exhale, walk or float both feet all the way to the top of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, rise and float both arms all the way up. And then both hands to prayer right in front of your chest. Now lean into the left foot. Reach down. Grab your right foot. Setting up for tree pose, you're going to take your right foot, bring it high to your inner left eye, left leg. Now, if you're practicing with us at home, one of the modifications that you can do here, instead of having the foot on the thigh, you can always bring the foot to the inner ankle like that, or you could even reach the toes out to the side. And this is one of those poses that it doesn't look like much, but when you actually do it, it's actually a pretty challenging balancing pose. So find your variation, and then wherever you are, feel your outer left eye standing leg drawing in towards your right foot. So there's like an inward pull, inward pull of energy. Good, both hands at prayer, right in front of the chest. Good, finding your gaze, staying with your breath. If you wanna take the arms up to the sky, Now's the time. So reaching those arms. Good. Find that variation. If you happen to fall out, it's all good. You just fall with this little smile on your face. Falling's part of the human experience. And it's not the fall that matters. It's how we, how we deal with that fall. See if you can just fall with grace. Take one last inhale. Arms up. Both hands to prayer. Lower slow. This is sometimes the hardest part. The exit, right foot comes back down onto the mat. Take a moment. Calibrate back to that. And then we'll switch to the other side. So reach down, grab your left foot. Pull your left foot up all the way to that inner right thigh, right leg. Or modify. Make it work for you. Maybe for the... The first few times you do this video with us, you have the foot on the floor. And then one day you just slide it up and you just keep progressing deeper and deeper into the practice. Good. The important thing, all that we really care about is that you have the breath and that you have the focus. Everything else over time will fall into place. When you're ready, take those arms, reach them all the way up to the sky. One of the great things about balancing poses is that it really demands all of your focus and all of your attention. So you can't think about all the things that are stressing you out in life until the instructor just reminded you. Take one last then I'll reach up and then hands back to prayer. Good as mindfully as you can. It's all about the transitions. Lower slow. 
left foot onto the floor. Awesome, you guys. Bend the knees, squat the hips down, and then chair pose. Arms all the way up to the sky. Hands to prayer in front of the heart. Left elbow, out of right knee, right thigh, as we come into chair twist. So your knees are even with each other. A lot of times, your left knee is going to want to really stick out beyond your right knee. So make sure that your knees are even as you pull your left hip and your left knee back. Squat way back into your glutes. Press your left elbow on that outer right thigh as you invite the right ribs to roll open to the sky. Last little twist there. And then chair. Inhale, arms reach up. Hands back to prayer. Right elbow, outer left knee, left thigh. Same thing, other side. Now you might feel that surge. You might feel that intensity starting to bubble up through the legs. This is a good thing. This is how we start to build strength. This is how we start to build power. See if you can keep your breath steady. See if you can keep your mind calm. See if you can roll those left ribs open. Give it one last little squeeze. And then chair pose. Inhale, arms back up. And then exhale, forward fold release. Flat back, inhale, heart out, step back to plank, pause there. Take one inhale to set, exhale, lower slow. Cobra, inhale, heart reaches up, down dog, exhale. Good, lift the left leg to the sky, inhale, left foot top of the mat, spin the back foot flat, warrior one, both arms, all the way up. Good. Get your feet set, noticing that your feet are a good four, four and a half feet apart from each other. That your left foot's far enough over to the left that your left heel lines up with the outside of your back right heel. Your left knee's bent right above your front left heel. Sometimes you got to bend a little bit deeper. Good. Left hand to left waist, right arm forward. All the way out to your front wall. Good. Roll that outer right hip forward. Good. Spin that inner right thigh backward. Good. Coming into what we call neutral rotation through the hips. Outer foot nice and strong. And then back to warrior one. Arms reach all the way up. Good. Feel that connection from the bottoms of your feet all the way up through your fingertips. Where your whole body feels like a conduit of moving, flow, and pulsating energy. One more in a warrior one reach up. Hands to prayer in front of the heart. Turn your torso out to the right. And then let the arms flow down and out. Landing in warrior two. Sliding the front left foot a little to the right. And lining left heel up with your back and a right arch. Notice how this shape makes you feel. I think for a lot of people, it feels empowering. It feels strong. It feels warrior-like. Notice the effects that these poses have on you on subtle levels. Good. Lower body stays the same. Flip the left palm up. And then reverse warrior. Right hand all the way back. Just making sure that your right hand's not on your right knee but it's on your thigh, your calf, or your hip. That way we're not buckling that joint in. Good. Start to feel this pose coming to a peak. Just like a weight. One last big inhale. Find that crest. And then back to warrior two. Good. Left forearm on top of your left thigh. Right arm straight up to the sky. Good. Or you can grab a block. Put your hand on top of the block. Rooting down through your bottom left arm, extending that right arm up. Good. Noticing that your left hip is wrapping and tucking underneath and in. Outer foot super glued into the floor. Good. Roll the right chest open. And then take the right arm. Reach it forward. All the way towards the front. Stretch out what we call the intercostals, the rib tissue. And the more that you open up those intercostals, the more effortless the breath can flow in and out through your lungs, the more powerful the breath becomes, 
And the more energy that you derive from that breath, one last little reach out, inhale, come all the way back up, and then straighten that left knee, left leg. Slide your back foot in a little bit, shorten your stance up, line your feet up, heel to heel. Good. Reach that left arm forward on the inhale, right hip slides back, and then triangle pose. Left hand comes down on top of your foot or your block. Left hip keeps wrapping underneath and in. Arms spread wide like wings. And then also your gaze. You could look down. You could look off to the side. You could look up. Just depends on where it feels most comfortable for your head and your neck. Ideally, we want to get to a place, if it feels right, to perhaps look up. You know, to accentuate that upward flow of energy. But as always, you adapt the poses to what feels right for you. Now roll the right chest open. And then take that top right arm and reach it all the way out into extended triangle. Breath by breath. Moment to moment. Just moving. Every muscle. Every joint. Every tendon, every ligament, every bone in your body. Last little reach there. Inhale, rise all the way up. Warrior two on the exhale. Bend your front left knee. Adjust your feet if you need to. Flip the left palm to the sky. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the mat. Inhale, left foot back. Exhale, lower. All the way slow. Cobra, inhale. And then last down dog. On the exhale. Great job, you guys. Very nice. Feel those palms rooted. Feel those hips sloping up. Feel those heels driving down. Take one last final inhale. Stretch it back. And then relax the knees down to the mat. Walk your knees forward to the top of the mat. Cross the feet behind you. Release onto your sit bones. And then bring the bottoms of your feet together. Toes forward. Heels in, knees out. Good. Grab your feet. Drag your feet in. Roll the outer hips down. Take an inhale. Lift your spine up tall. And then exhale. Fold all the way over and down. Good. Bound angle. Using the inhales to lengthen the spine out. Using the exhales to let the chest melt down. And again, if it feels right, you just close the eyes. As you breathe right to that source of sensation. Where do you feel it? And can you breathe right into that? Allowing the intelligence of the pose, the intelligence of your yoga, and the intelligence of your body to fulfill its mission of bringing you back to balance. Now let's come all the way back up to seated. Bring the hands to the outer knees. Close the knees up. Extend your legs forward out along the mat. Good. Flexing your toes as they draw backward. Take your arms, reach them up. Huge inhale, get tall. And then exhale, forward fold. Just melt all the way over and down. For those of you practicing at home, you're going to notice these guys are pretty flexible. They're pretty open. If you're practicing and you're like really stiff, it's all good. You have your hands at your knees. You have them at your shins. If you have a strap, you can always get the strap, you can throw it around the feet, you can grab a towel even, and you use that strap to help pull you in there. And over time, you'll naturally start to open up. One of the keys in these forward bends is really the exhales. So you want your exhales to be super long and super thorough. And then you can even flirt with pausing the breath at the end of the exhale, and that'll maximize your stretch and then you'll start to open up to whole new degrees of flexibility and openness. And it takes patience, it takes time, it takes consistency, but it will come. 
Last couple breaths there. Great, you guys. Take your time. Go ahead and crawl yourself all the way back up to seated. And then we'll release all the way onto our back. All the way onto our mat. As you get onto your back, reach forward, grab your shins, squeeze your knees into your belly. Good. Bring your right ankle on top of your left knee, left eye, so your right knee flares out towards the right wall. Take your right arm, slip it through your legs, grabbing either your left hamstring or your left shin. You flex both feet. Good. Let's bring the forehead up towards the left knee for a moment. So lift the head up. As you do that, roll your outer right hip forward. Good. Softly relax the head all the way back down into the mat. Left eyes pulling in. Outer right hips rolling forward as you come into thread the needle pigeon. Stretching the right hip and all the muscles in it and around it. Out of all the pigeon stretches that we have in yoga, this is the safest one for the knees. Our knees can be a very vulnerable, vulnerable joint within our bodies. So even as we progress deeper into our yoga practice, and move maybe into stronger classes, if we have knee issues, we should always substitute the other pigeons for this one. That way we don't tweak those knees out. Now let's give that left eye one last little squeeze. Uncross the right leg, grab the shins, squeeze the knees back in, and then we'll switch to the other side. So left ankle right on top of the right thigh, the feet flex, the left arm threads right down through the legs. Flex your feet. Take a moment, lift the head up. And then relax the head all the way back down. Last couple of breaths there. Give that one last little hug. Uncross that left leg. Grab the shins. Squeeze both eyes in. And then let's bring the feet flat on the mat, the width of the hips. Slide the heels close in towards the hips. And then we'll take it into bridge pose. Press the feet down into the mat, lift the belly to the sky, tuck the shoulders underneath the upper back, interlace the fingers. Good, roll your inner thighs downward so you feel space, space across that low back and sacrum. And then breathe all the way down into your belly, all the way down into the low, low belly. And they've actually studied people that suffer from chronic stress, anxiety disorders. And one thing that they noticed they all had in common was that the breath was often stuck in the chest and that the breath wasn't traveling down to the low belly. So we know that there's something incredibly beneficial for our whole nervous system within this kind of belly yogi breath. And this is a great pose to access that. Let's come up onto the tips of the toes now. Get a little bit more height, a little bit more space. Take that last final inhale there, and then lower slow all the way back down. Good, grab your shins, squeeze the knees in, and then happy baby. Slide the hands down the legs, grab the outer edges of your feet, spread your knees out a little bit wider than your ribs. Pull your thighs down as you sink deep into your hips. Lengthen your tailbone forward. 
feels good, you want to gently rock side to side. You can massage across the whole entire surface of your back. Great. Bring your inner knees back together to your belly. Grab your shins. Keep your right knee in. Extend your left leg forward along the mat. Reach the right arm all the way out to the right. Anchor your right shoulder blade into the floor. And with your left hand on your outer right knee, let your right knee drape all the way over to the left. Bent knee. Reclining. Spinal twist, allowing that low back to open up and stretch. And then right knee back up to middle, squeeze the right thigh back into the belly. Switch sides. Left knee in, right leg out, left arm out to the left. Take a moment. Anchor the left shoulder blade down. And then let that left knee drape all the way over to the right. Same thing. Other side. And then left knee back up to middle. Squeeze both the left and the right thigh into the belly. And then finally, on a big inhale, curl the forehead up to the knees. Give your whole body a big squeeze. And exhale, Shavasana, corpse pose. Just release onto your back. If you're newer to the practice, you just spread your legs, your arms out a little bit wide. That way you don't feel too narrow or contracted. You open the palms up to the sky. Close the eyes. And then you just allow yourself to find stillness. And as you get still, you just allow the effects of what you just moved through to really have an opportunity to assimilate and synthesize deep into you. Take these last couple minutes here and just dissolve into stillness. Shavasana. Nice and easily start to come back in just by moving the fingertips, moving the toes around. And then whatever you just dropped into it, just bring with you. You reach the arms all the way up over the head, interlace the fingers, turn the palms inside out. And as you stretch back through your arms, just stretch the feet forward. Reach forward, grab the shins, squeeze the knees into the belly, and then gently rock forward, backward, forward, backward, rocking yourself all the way up to a last final cross-legged seat. As you get up to seated, bring the hands up to prayer right in front of your chest. Take a moment closing the eyes. And envisioning yourself moving from this practice to the rest of your day as the embodiment of health, of balance, of strength, of power, of truth, 
and nobility. Much health, much wealth, much love to you. Namaste.